Welcome to AI in 5 with Snorkel. I'm Shane Johnson, and in this episode, I'd like to share four RAG optimization tips, hopefully within five minutes. First, switch to a better chunking strategy. Um, ideally, we want to split our documents into chunks that are small, but still self-contained, uh, meaning that we want all tightly related information to remain in the same chunk, nothing more, nothing less. Um, the challenge is that when you're getting started, most RAG frameworks will default to a rather basic chunking strategy. Um, typically, they will try to split documents every thousand tokens, perhaps allowing for some overlap, you know, another 20 tokens between chunks. Um, this results in too much noise and too much fragmentation, and it's going to make it difficult for the modder to generate a correct answer. The good news is almost all these frameworks support alternative chunking strategy. I would look for one that's based on the natural structure of documents. Think pages, sections, headings, paragraphs, tables. Uh, those are going to do a much better job than what you're getting started with by default. Second, and this is an almost always overlooked step, add metadata to your chunks before indexing them. Um, this metadata can be useful in a handful of different ways. Um, two of them, filtering and retrieval, I'm gonna talk about in just a moment here. Um, but of course, if you have thousands of documents, that means you could have hundreds of thousands, potentially millions of chunks, and we're certainly not gonna be able to add metadata to those one at a time. Uh, the good news is that with platforms like Snorkel Flow, we can do that programmatically um, using classifiers and information extractors. So in a matter of minutes, we can extract that metadata and add it back as labels to those junks, um, regardless of how many there are. Third, fine tune your embedding model. Um, you know, the embeddings are critical to helping us find the most relevant chunks that are stored in a vector database. Uh, the problem is that embedding models uh, represent a very large space, and your domain probably occupies a very small one within that. Um, so when you have a very small space and you're putting all of your information in there, then we pick a point and try to find all you know, similar um, chunks, chances are you're going to bring in a lot more than you wanted to. Uh, so with fine tuning, um, the idea is we take that small space and we expand it, kind of push out all the other domains. And then within this much bigger space, you can now put you know, related chunks closer to each other and unrelated chunks farther apart. Um, so then we create training data, which is really a set of prompt chunk pairs, both good examples as well as bad examples, uh, with the help of SMEs or foundation models for synthetic generation. Uh, and we can fine tune any open model of our choice, right? There's a lot out there to choose from these days. Lastly, take advantage of that chunk metadata to actually improve search. Uh, you know, you typically do it based on the user query. Um, so we can do embedding for that user query, and we use it to find chunks uh, with similar embeddings. Um, this doesn't always per work perfectly. On the right here, um, I picked Twilight, right? So let's say that we're indexing you know, a whole bunch of information from IMDB, and I ask a simple question such as, what is Twilight about? Uh, well, it turns out there's lots of movies uh, called Twilight, and even more movies that include the word Twilight. Um, so if we were to do an embedding search, chances are we're going to get chunks related to all of these movies and probably an incoherent answer. Um, however, when we're indexing those chunks, if we add additional metadata, in this case the theme, uh, we can begin to distinguish those. You might say, what is Twilight about? Please filter this by crime movies. Um, that's not. That's going to make sure that we don't get a whole bunch of chunks about that vampire movie from the late 2000s. Um, so as I said before, that metadata uh, that you add to chunks early on could be very useful. And here, it means faster and more precise search. So what happens when you put all these things together? Uh, we worked with one of the very big banks in the US. They were building an AI co-pilot around document Q&A. Um, out of the box, they were saying at about 25%. Uh, with the tips I just mentioned, as well as a handful of others, we were able to bring them up to 95%. Um, so hopefully I got close to five minutes here, and we'll see you soon with the next AI in 5 episode. Bye, all.